Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to go ahead and get it on. Uh, so we got a new episode for y'all, man. Welcome to Historizing the MC Culture, episode 12. The, uh, the genesis of outlawism and the rise of the 1%. Um, I'm your host, Prophet, member of Outcast Motorcycle Club. And uh, on this episode, we look to explore the inception of outlaw bikers and the rise of the 1% as an ideology and as a symbol. So let's go ahead and get into it. In historizing the inception of outlawism and the 1%, it's important to make clear two distinctions. Uh, the first being that all one percenters are outlaws and that there is a difference between the deviant one percent who and the deviant one percent and outlaws. Uh, and those are outlaws who don't wear the one percent badge. And so in explaining the relationship between them, you'll find that one has all the tenets of the other carefully woven into its framework, while the other only goes so far before it halts itself short of that threshold. And so in analyzing the history of outlaws and 1%, we find that there are significant events that led to the credence to outlawism, and this is their genesis. Most motorcycle club members are familiar with the events of Hollister, California, 1947. This event is known as the Hollister Incident, and it evolves around what we call gypsy tours. And this marks the incident that formed the basis for outlawism. It's important to understand that the behavior of outlaw bikers didn't change prior to or after the Hollister Incident. Rather, it was the public perception and the media sensationalism that was the impetus to officially distinguishing outlaw bikers. The first culprit of delusions of grandeur is Life Magazine and the photographer known as Barney Peterson. Together, they concocted a sensational story that ran on 21 July 1947, which completely mischaracterized the bikers in attendance as uncontrollable hooligans and reckless. And because of such widespread distribution, this sensationalized take of heathenism, along with a completely staged photograph spread across America, unchecked. In response to the fallout of the American Motorcycle Association, um, they were forced to release a statement. And this statement is effectively used to distance themselves from bikers. The exact wording of the statement was, in quotes, um, the trouble was caused by the one percent deviant that tarnishes the public image of both motorcycles and motorcycle clubs and that the other 99 percent of motorcyclists are good, decent, law abiding citizens. End quote. It must be pointed out that the AMA now admits that it has no record of anyone working for the AMA ever making that statement to Life Magazine. Nevertheless, the immaculate conception of outlawism happened right there. When clubs like the 13 Rebels, uh, the Pissed Off Bastards of Bloomington, the Yellow Jackets, the Top Hatters, and the Market Street Commandos, and the Booze Fighters officially rejected that and followed that rebuttal of established norms with the visual rebellion as well. This was the birth of cutting off the sleeves and the collar of the denim jackets and cutting the circular patch into various rockers and stripping the bikes, also known as chopping and bobbing, down to bare minimum and giving away trophies and recognition for the rattiest bikes present. This new form of outlawism became diametrically opposed to the principles of the AMA and outlaws became the dichotomy to establish norms. The second act in a three act play on the birth of outlawism and the one percent was the meeting that was held among the pantheon of prominent California bikers. The outline of this meeting was told by George Worthen 
in his 1978 book, A Wayward Angel, The Full Story of the Hell's Angels. Worthen states that, that in 1960, there was a huge club summit and it was held at the home of one Frank Sadelec. And he was the president of the San Francisco chapter of the Hell's Angels MC. The original purpose of the meeting was to discuss police harassment, but the discussion turned toward the AMA and the 1% label. Worthen notes that at that summit, the clubs decided to accept the 1% label as a tribute to their identity, and they began to identify themselves as righteous outlaws. And reportedly, George Worthen and Sonny Barger were the first to get the 1% tattoos. Understand that the 1% diamond we know today was not originally a diamond at all. Rather, just the number one with the uh, percent sign next to it. The diamond symbol was based off the Southern California Outlaw Federation, which were a collection of 13 clubs whose symbol was a diamond with the number 13 in the middle of it. The 13 was replaced with the one and the percent sign to give us the one percent symbol we know today. And the final evolution into the birth of outlawism came from the political arena. By this time, a relatively small population knew about the microcosm biker scene, and most were uninterested as they were deemed the drudge of society and insignificant. But in 1965, the California state attorney by the name of Thomas C. Lynch published a report on bikers which would become the first large scale bureaucratic attempt to portray motorcycle clubs as a clear and present danger to the public. This was the Lynch report and it was, was reported as grossly inaccurate and full of urban legends rather than facts. The report started off with the heading hoodlum activities and mentioned unsubstantiated absurdities as gang rapes of innocent young women and the plundering of small townships. The Lynch report listed outlandish criminal actions such as domestic terrorism, theft, murder, assault, battery, malicious destruction of property, narcotics trafficking, and sexual aberrations. And it, it, it's true that some members of some clubs were involved in that type of activity, but the report made no attempt to distinguish who was responsible and who was riding righteous. Instead, it cast a negative light over all motorcycle clubs in California. And the impact of that report spread outside of the state to other areas. And much like the famous stage photograph of the drunken biker from the Hollister incident from Life magazine, this only served as a catalyst to promote the negative stereotypes of bikers and motorcycle clubs. So in short, the damage was unmeasurable. What once was considered a small underground society was now thrust into the public light as the terror on two wheels. And that is looking to these people were looking to ride into your town, grab your daughters, tear up your place and then ride back out of town. What these three events shown us is the conception, the evolution of the lifestyle of outlawism and the birth of the one uh, percent. It, it gives us a historized look at the elements that gave rise to outlawism and the 1% badge. And this is important for us to contextualize as we piece together their ascension of the outlaws and their separation from non-outlaws. So this has been Historizing the MC Culture, episode 12, the genesis of outlawism and the 1% with profit. Be sure to uh, like this episode, subscribe, and leave a comment. Also, be sure to check out the other 11 episodes for more MC culture and history. And lastly, each one has a responsibility to teach one. Peace.